its skin sits atop the preserved carcass of a horse, proudly holding its brain in one hand and its heart in another. This is one of dozens of bodies on display at the grotesque Body Worlds exhibition in London, which continues to enthrall British visitors. These bodies are all real. They've undergone a process known as plastination, a process which turns flesh and bone into a permanent plastic form. But this exhibition has created a furor of protest from religious groups who see it as a cynical exploitation of the dead in the guise of art. But the man behind it is unrepentant. This exhibition is not about art or science, it's about instruction. Instruction in the fullest sense of the word, in that people attending the exhibition can realise their own vulnerability. You might expect that the inventor of this bizarre development of anatomical preservation might be a bit odd. Professor Gunther von Hagens, the German scientist who invented plastination, doesn't disappoint. Seen here in this promotional video filmed at his Institute for Plastination in Heidelberg, the undertaker like von Hagens is obsessed with plastinating the dead. He sees himself as a modern day anatomical visionary, a 21st century da Vinci. I provide insights into bodily interiors. People can look inside. This only becomes possible when I can visualize partitions into the body or gaps in structures that are aesthetically worthwhile and instructive, and then expand the resulting fragments, open them like bodily doors, or even move them around in relation to one another. But despite the controversy, the maverick Professor von Hagens has begun promoting the science of plastination outside of his native Germany. The past decade has seen scores of foreign anatomical specialists flocking to his Heidelberg Institute to master his secret techniques. In turn, that's created a plastination boom in some unlikely corners of the world. Professor Gabitov is the chief anatomical specialist at Kyrgyzstan's Academy of Medical Science. The Academy is one of two international centers of plastination. The other is in China. Under Professor Gabitov, the Kyrgyz Academy promotes the distinct medical advantages of this unusual process. Kyrgyzstan's plastinators have had a busy decade. This museum in Kyrgyzstan's capital, Bishkek, is a testament to their efforts. In fact, many of the bodies on display in Professor von Hagen's Body Worlds exhibition in London came from here. Все приходят в художественные галереи и 
восхищаются прекрасным телом человека снаружи. Но оказывается, оно не менее прекрасно изнутри. И даже, пожалуй, более, наверное, прекрасно. Определенно его структуре и функциям. И причем это взаимоотношение лучше даже картин выдающихся знаменитых художников. Вот здесь... Видите, эта область так, крыло воздушной кости, да? Вот. Значит, если гнойник тут вот это... While other medical students toil away in basement morgues, gagging from the fumes of formalin, Professor Gabitov's students get a much more pleasant view inside the human body. Plastinated bodies offer some very distinct advantages over the traditional methods used by anatomists. Gone are the days of glass jars, bad smells and messy bits. Plastinated bodies have no odour or contain any living microbes. Best of all, they can be stored anywhere at any temperature. В наше нормальное рабочее помещение для того, чтобы дальше продолжать трудиться и грызть гранит непознанного. В конце концов, до чего-нибудь и доберемся хорошего. Профессор Габитов clearly sees himself as a man of science. But down in the bowels of the medical academy, something more macabre is afoot. Turning corpses into plastic looks more like gothic horror than cutting-edge technology. The people who ended up here are afforded precious little dignity in death. That raises the disturbing question of where the bodies come from. Professor Gabitov insists that they are all legally obtained according to Kyrgyzstan's laws. Тела, не востребованные в течение 30 дней, являются анатомическим даром. Это первый источник поступления. Второй источник поступления, когда тела отказываются родственники хоронить, или это безродные тела, или это безродные тела, в течение 30 дней. The start of the process, when the unclaimed bodies still look disturbingly human, is the most grotesque. In an operation that looks like a multiple blood transfusion, a system of cannulas infuse plastic polymers throughout the bloodstream. И вот теперь сейчас это тело будет погружено здесь в воду, как канули подсоединены ко всем этим шлангам. И запущена система введения специальной полимерационной жидкости. Будет. Этот процесс здесь будет длиться до 48 часов. This body has only just begun its journey to full plastination, as the liquid polymers slowly seep through its veins. In an adjoining room, chemical baths betray little sign of their contents, but this is actually the longest and most crucial stage of plastination. For up to nine months, bodies will remain immersed in these tanks as the liquid plastics are infused into their solid tissues like bones and muscle. have been literally spliced and diced in every possible configuration. Rather disturbing.
disturbing given that most of the people on display here did not actually give their consent. Professor Gabitov agrees that the 30-day rule for unclaimed bodies may not be long enough for relatives to act. But he has a solution. The relatives are always welcome to take their loved ones home if they miss the deadline. The fact that the cycle of plastination approximately runs in the past 8-10 months, sometimes a year even. По крайней мере, первые полгода еще тело вполне можно узнать, и мы можем его отдать. Причем отдать, ну, практически как будто в том состоянии, как будто он только что умер. Поставить, ничего не надо делать, вот даже никого снимать ничего, просто поставить его где-нибудь, или на кресло посадить, или у шкафа где-нибудь оставить. Вот оно такое, при комнатной температуре будет еще десятки лет и находиться. But the laid back corpse in the corner option in Kyrgyzstan is not shared by the rest of the world. The apparently ready supply of bodies for plastination is a live and controversial issue. В Новосибирске сегодня поставлена точка в расследовании одного из самых скандальных дел о перевозке в Германию нескольких десятков тел наших умерших сограждан. Когда на Западе открылась Late необычная выставка... Late last year, выставка, year Russian authorities in the Siberian city of Novosibirsk launched an investigation into the local medical school for illegally supplying dozens of bodies to Professor von Hagen's in Germany. Данный договор был отменен, так как не соответствовал нормам и требованиям закона Российской Федерации. Было произведено захоронение, и упокоен, обнаружен и подготовлен к второй отправке. После успешной отправки первой партии в институт... Several Russians were charged over the illegal body trade, but Professor von Hagens insists he did nothing wrong. Back in Kyrgyzstan, far from the controversy about body-snatching anatomists, Professor Gabitov can't see what all the fuss is about. He says many people actually choose to be permanently plastinated for posterity. Because there are also idea people who think that at least my body will be able to bring the benefit of science and practice than его съедят черви в земле. В частности, я сам свое тело завещал кафедре. Сам будет? Да. Правда? Да. И подписал договор. И как будет э, потом? Ну, как будет. Когда э, я закончу свое пребывание в этом мире, я думаю, что мои сотрудники сделают какой-то экспонат, который бы обеспечил учебный процесс на кафедре. Не испугалась? Ну а почему? Если это необходимо живым, мертвые должны служить живым. Yeah, she's